In this tutorial you will learn how to make realistic looking leaves and foliage. For this we will first add details to a simple geometry, then discover the updated translucency workflow in the Vera material and finally separate the front and back side for our leaves. So in this video we will build some nice realistic shader for these leaves in here. You can see we have a very simple scene. Let me just hide the leaves so that you can see what we have set up here already. We have a simple ocean and if you're interested in shading oceans, I have a own dedicated video that deals with this topic. And then we just have some kind of nice branches here laid out and these kind of lemons here to make the scene overall look a little bit more interesting. And then as said, we have here our leaves. And if we examine the geometry, you can see it's just very simple geometry. And that's normally how you will encounter your assets for vegetation. So for example, these leaves here don't have any thickness. They are just one-sided polygons. And that's normally how you encounter your assets because it wouldn't really make sense to model out those leaves. And all of the details will be added by textures. So the workflow of how to build translucent shaders in V-Ray has changed or adapted in later versions of V-Ray. And this video here just serves as an update to make sure that you use the new and most recent and most recommended workflow in order to build translucent shaders. And translucent shaders are the kind of shader that we need in order to make these leaves here look realistic. That means we have the sun hitting them from one side and then the sun can travel through our leaf and would show up on the other side basically. So we're gonna build these kind of nice translucent shaders for these scenes. And in order to do that, we first need some realistic textures with decent maps. And for this, we're gonna go over to Quixel Mega Scans and find some nice assets in there. So here we are in Quixel Bridge, and that's part of the Megascans asset library. If you wanna know how to use them in 3ds Max and V-Ray, there's also our own dedicated video that you can find in my channel. So now we can just look here for leaf, and you can see they have different kind of assets here. They have full 3D plants, which in this case we don't need because we have already a 3D leaf that we just need some textures for. And now we can check out here these atlases or these decals. You can see in here, there's a huge variety of different kind of leaves with all different kind of maps and so on, everything that we need. And in order that most people here are able to follow this tutorial, let's just check for leaf and then free. And then there's this banana tree leaf asset here. And this I just gonna download and use for this tutorial. So yes, I know in the scene we just saw some lemons and this one here seems to be a banana tree leaf, but just ignore that for now because as said, this one is more for educational purpose. And now let's check out here the download settings. We can choose the resolution down here and then in the download settings, just select the kind of maps which we need. And I just left everything here pretty much at default, but there are certain kind of maps which we need, which would be the albedo map here the roughness map, displacement and normal map, the opacity map, and then most important here, the translucency map in order to get some realistic result for our leaves. Then once everything is downloaded, we can just easily import it into our 3ds Max scene by using the export plugin, or just manually drag in the different kind of textures. Now let's go back to 3ds Max and V-Ray and see how we can build a nice shader. So now we're back in the Slate Material Editor of 3ds Max. And as you can see, I laid out all of the different texture maps, which we downloaded already here on the left side. And then we just have a very simple Viva material here on the right side that has everything here set pretty much to default for now. So now we can start to connect those maps and let's start with this opacity map first because at the moment we just have this very rough low poly geometry of those leaves here and this opacity map will help us to make the leaves overall look a little bit more detailed. So we can just connect this opacity map into the opacity slot in here and then once we do this you can see that now the leaves have these kind of random cuts in here. The edge here is smooth it just basically eats away a little bit from this polygon geometry and we just have leaves that look a bit more detailed and realistic now. So as you can see down here, we have different kind of opacity modes. We have this stochastic mode, which is the default. And then there's two more modes, the normal mode and clip mode. And the normal mode works the best with 
transparent or half transparent pixels in our opacity map. So if you need the best quality, you can choose this normal mode, but the clip mode, for example, only supports fully transparent or fully opaque pixels. So everything else will be kind of clipped away. And that's the method that renders the most fast. So if you have lots of leaves, for example, overlaying each other, and there's lots of opacity levels that would need to be calculated, then this clip mode here is the fastest. And this stochastic mode basically supports also half transparent pixels. And it's kind of like a toned down version of this normal mode, which also renders quite fast, but you don't totally clip away half transparent pixels. So in this case, we're gonna use this clip mode because we don't have any kind of half transparent pixels in our opacity map. And by this make sure that our leaves here render the most fast and efficient way. So now let's add some normal map detail. And for this, we would need to connect our normal map into this bump map in here. And by default, somehow the bump map is always set to a value of 30%. So in order to have our full normal map detail show up, we would need to choose a value here of 100. So now we can easily add a V-Ray normal map node into our node view and then just connect the normal map into this normal map slot and then connect this into the bump map slot of our V-Ray material. So once we do this, we can check out here our normal map channel and then see that there is some kind of normal map detail here already showing up. But there are two things which I would like to address. So first of all, when using normal maps from mega scans, we need to flip this green channel in here, as you can also learn in my own dedicated video about how to use mega scans asset in V-Ray. So once we do this, our normal map here shows correctly. And then once we go to the effects result channel, we can see we have the normal map here showing up a little bit already. But at the moment, it's maybe a bit too less. So we can see we have this nice line down the center. But in order to pronounce it a little bit more, let's just increase this bump map strength here to a value of 250 for now to just make sure that we get these kind of nice leaf details here, these different lines which are showing up. And like this, our overall geometry here looks a bit more realistic. So now that we set up some nice looking geometry with some nice looking details here for our leaves, it's time to start to make them look actually like leaves. And for this, we can first of all easily collect our diffuse color in this diffuse map slot. Once we do this, we can see, yeah, now our leaves become green, but they don't look anything like leaves for the moment. And that has two reasons. First of all, there's no specular or reflectivity information. And second, and most important, we didn't use any kind of translucency for our leaves yet. That means the light cannot really travel through them and the backside becomes very, very dark. And let's first deal with our specular information for those leaves. So for this, we would need to bump up here our reflection amount all the way to pure white and then use this roughness map that we downloaded from Megascans. But the problem is that our V-Ray material by default expects here a glossiness map, and we need to tell it that it uses a roughness map. So we can just switch this one here to use roughness. You can see that this name here updates, and then we can easily connect our roughness map into this slot down here. Then once we did this, we can see that we have now some nice reflections here happening on our leaves. And this together with the normal map detail, as you can see here, creates this kind of nice and realistic result. Now our leaves look already a lot better, but we still need to set up the correct translucency for them. So this is where the workflow has been significantly updated in later versions of V-Ray. And now the V-Ray material supports subsurface scattering and it does support that also for single-sided polygons like we have here for those leaves by enabling this thin walled mode in here. So let's do that. Let's enable this thin walled mode that you can always enable if you have these kind of leaves here which don't have any thickness, just single-sided polygons. And now we can use this translucency mode here set to subsurface scattering. Once we do this, you will see a very drastic effect that we're gonna change in a second. So as you can see now, we have very white leaves suddenly, and we don't have any of our diffuse color here showing through anymore. And that is because we have this subsurface scattering color set to pure white. 
and the subsurface scattering amount set to one. So if this amount here is set to one, we don't have any kind of diffuse information here happening anymore. And you can tone that down. For example, you can blend it to a value of 0 0.5. Once you do this, you can see we have some of our diffuse information here coming back. And now we have this kind of effect, as you can see that we have the sunlight here hitting our leaves from the back and the sunlight can travel through the leaves and then show up on the other side. So now instead of working with this subsurface scattering color here set to white, we can use our translucency map, which we downloaded. Once we plug this in, we can see that now it already starts to look a lot better. So now we can play with this subsurface scattering amount value here to just determine the value that is correct. And let's just focus, for example, on this part where we have the sunlight hitting the front of our leaf and then scatters through on the backside. And for me, I think at the moment it looks a bit too bright. So I would just expect that a bit more light would be absorbed here. That's why I will tone down the subsurface scattering amount to a value of 0.25. We can now see that this part here is a bit darker and at the same time more of our diffuse contribution here is showing up and like this i think we get overall a more realistic result so you just need to tweak this value until you find something that looks and behaves correctly and in this case this value here is 0.25 i would never really go very close to one because that means you don't have anything here from the diffuse map showing up and you have just full translucency which is not realistic you will always have like a mixture of both of these aspects so now in this final part we will talk about how we can use different textures for our leaves for the front and the back and as you can see at the moment if i switch to my diffuse channel we just use the same texture for the front and the back and that might work very well for many assets but if you have basically textures that are different for the back side of the leaves there's also a way how you can do that and here for Megascans, unfortunately, we didn't really have different kind of assets. So I just have this asset here downloaded, but I just made my own kind of version of this and I just changed the colors and contrast a little bit. And I want to use this one here for the backside of the leaf. So in this situation where you have a different texture for the front and the back, and only then you would use a V-Ray two-sided material and now you need to duplicate this leaves shader here. Let's call this one here leaves front. And let's just duplicate that with using all of the different texture maps. And now instead of using this diffuse map, we will just put our new diffuse map into here. Let's just call this one here leaves back. And now we can connect both of those shaders in here into our V-Ray two-sided material. And let's start with the front material first. Let's put this into here. And then let's put the back material into here once we enable this little checkbox. And now it's important to know that if you have these materials here set to thin walled, this translucency map slot here has basically no effect at all. So now let's assign this material to our leaves. And once we do this, you can see I can play with this translucency here all I want. I will always get exactly the same kind of result. And that's because it's being totally ignored if you have the thin walled option in those shaders here set. And now you can see if I switch to the diffuse map that I have a different brighter texture here for the back of the leaves and a darker texture here for the front of the leaves. And if I wanted to, I could now make adjustments to these different kind of shaders. For example, I can invert here the normal map for the back side of the leaves, or I can give it different kind of roughness and glossiness values. And by this way, have a way more complex result here for our shaders. So that's the workflow that you use when using different kind of texture maps for the front and the back of our leaves. So this basically concludes this tutorial about how we can generate these kind of nice looking leaves. You will see that even in the Cosmos asset library, some of the, or actually most of the three assets, they don't use this kind of like updated workflow yet, or maybe will never use that. 
but I think this kind of updated workflow here works much better compared to previously. And I would recommend to always use this kind of approach here. So if you like my kind of work, you can support me through Patreon, where you can also download all of my scene files, watch some bonus lessons, or even watch whole courses. I have a whole course on realistic car shading up there, for example. So check out this if that has any additional value for you. Otherwise, subscribe to this channel to not miss out on any future videos. And see you in the next one. Until then, take care.